everyone. So we are gonna make a, um, a one pot wonder soap tonight, um, another beach soap. And I am gonna use these little coffee grounds for our sand. And I'm sending this an eighth an ocean from Nurture Soap, which normally behaves really well for me. And I actually did have a kind of a sad thing happen recently. So we're gonna hope that it behaves better. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my lye solution. I'm using a different cup than normal. Um, and it's a little wimbly, so hold on a second. Okay, so I changed my gloves and I um, tried to correct my camera lens and I actually <laughs> made it more crooked. Fantastic. Um, anyway, so that's my live solution going in. Um, if you're new to the channel, hi, hello. That is distilled water, uh, powdered sugar, and sodium lactate. And this is my goat's milk going in. Uh, milked from our goats. Um, again, if you're new, um, hi, hello. My name is Whitney and I have too many goats. Anyway, so now I'm going to blend this up and I'm going to blend it up just to emulsion. I'm not going to blend it super, super um, far because I, I'm i doing a one pot wonder and I want to make sure that all of my colors and layers all set up really well. So I'm checking my trace checking to see if the emulsion's good, and it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my spatula and just wipe everything off and then divide out my batter to add my colors. So now that my batter is at emulsion, I'm gonna go ahead and measure out um, all the small little pouring pitchers for all my colorants. And I learned something very valuable with this particular fragrance very recently, and I will share that video maybe. Um, it probably will only be on something like TikTok or my Instagram stories because it's embarrassing. And basically what happened is I, I'm used to this fragrance. I use it quite a bit. I've used it a ton for challenges, and it's a really well-behaved fragrance. And so my prideful self went ahead and added the fragrance to the entire um, soap batter before I split it off, which is not what I normally do. If you've watched my videos, you know that I usually do my colors and then I add my fragrance. But I thought I would, you know, do myself a solid and get it done ahead of time and not have to kind of measure out my fragrance in each individual little thing. And anyway, so I did it and it was horrendously bad. Like the... <laughs> Oh God, it's so bad. Uh, I will show a picture in the upper corner here in a second um, for how bad this was. And so like any good um, modern soap maker, I went to the internet and said, hi, internet, I've had this problem. Has anyone else had a problem? And um, talking to other people and working through some things, I figured out basically what was wrong was that I had added the fragrance to my entire batch and then you know, went on about my normal adding colors and stuff. And that really, that really made a difference. So um, note to self, don't change things when you do things a certain way. Even if the fragrance behaves really well for you, you know, don't, don't, don't tempt fate. Don't, <laughs> don't play with things. Just, you know, do what you do and, and don't mess with it because um, I was able to save those. The, the soap is fine. It's safe. It's just kind of colored oddly. Um, they will just be my beach boo-boo bars. So these are my colorants going in. This is mostly, um, oh, I think it's Shimmer Gold Mica from Nurture Soap. And I also have a decent amount of um, the Gold Eco Glitter from Nurture Soap. And I add that in because, A, it's Eco Glitter, so it's not going to hurt the environment as much. And I love glitter, but I don't want to hurt uh, my turtley friends. And B, this is Coffee Grounds going in. Um, I want some of that shimmer to last through the cure, through the cut, right? And a lot of times when you use these shimmery, pretty gold micas, they do not last and you don't keep that, that kind of glittery feel, but this does. Um, so that is Whitney's super secret trick um, and your reward for listening to me rattle on. Uh, this is a couple different um, micas blend together. Um, I want to say it's, oh, I think it's sea green and some titanium dioxide and... Um, Oh, what else did I use? I want to say I actually used a little bit of the neon blue to pop it up a little bit because it was a little too dark or a little too light. Um, so that's what that one is. Um, and I don't need a whole bunch. I actually made a whole bunch of that color so I could use it in other um, other soaps because I really, really liked it. And it's a pretty color. It works out great. It stays true. Um, and that's something you have to consider when you're doing these blues and stuff. Like you need to add enough mica to it to balance out the yellows. And I've talked about this before in other videos but I always get a lot of questions on how are your colors so bright? 
And they're so bright because I use titanium dioxide to help, you know, be the opacity so the color I want it to be stays. Um, so this is the same blend. It just doesn't have titanium dioxide in it. And I think I actually added a little bit of Force of Nature, um, which is one of the Nurture Soap colorants uh, pigments, which adds like that depth and green teal tone to it, um, which I hadn't added this before to other versions of the soap. And I really love the depth that this adds in the final bar. Um, so I kind of went out on a limb and I loved it. Not going to hate it. I think it's fantastic. So that's what that one is. Um, so this next one is, um, hold on, there it is, Midnight Blue from Nurture Soap, uh, which is my favorite blue. I have talked about this blue a million times, and I will probably continue talking about this blue until the end of the earth. It's the best blue on the face of the earth. You should buy like 700 pounds of it. It's fantastic. Again, that's one of my secret weapons for how my colors look so good. Um, I use really good colorants and from really good suppliers. Um, it is uh, a pigment blend, I want to say. I don't think it's just a mica. I think it's a pigment blend, and so it has neons already in it. Um, that's a trick that a lot of soapers that, you know, do the Soap Challenge Club and, um, you know, are looking for those really vibrant colors will talk about that they have, you know, they use neons in their colorants. So Nurture makes it easy for you, and they just do it for you. Um, this is just titanium dioxide. I've talked about titanium dioxide quite a bit. Um, this is from Brambleberry. Um, I, I love Nurture Soap and I do love Brambleberry too. They're a fantastic supplier. Um, but Nurture only offers the water soluble, um, titanium dioxide. And that doesn't work for me very well. I tend to get glycerin rivers. And while I think glycerin rivers are completely cosmetic and totally no problem, I don't particularly like them. I like my designs to look like what I want them to look like and not have like a fine, odd, you know, crackly pattern. Um, so I use the Brambleberry one, which has, um, which is oil soluble. And, um, I follow Lisa Cunningham's, um, video on how to use and disperse it. And it works very well for me. Hi, Lisa. Um, okay. So this is, um, this is my nice deep dark blue, which I, you know, talk about every once in a while. Um, I will probably release my mica recipe for how I make this blue for my cheeky charm club members. Um, so it's, it's silly that I'm a little protective over it, but like a really good deep blue is really hard to make and it took me a while to figure it out. Um, so I'm, I'm protective over it. And I would say, I'm sorry. You know, I, get, I got some flack on Instagram from people like, oh, well, you know, Katie, Katie shares her color. Well, you know what? Katie at Royalty Soaps is amazing and she sells like a gajillion bars of soap and makes like God only knows how much revenue off YouTube and other platforms. And I, I'm not that cool. I'm not that big. I'm just little old me. So, you know, let me have my secrets. Let me, <laughs> let me, let me have my little things that I've figured out. Cause I worked hard to learn these and, you know, just to ask me to give it away is, is a little hard for me, I guess. So anyway, I'm just going through and checking all of my, um, my batters to make sure everything's, you know, still nice and fluid. Um, I really have a little bit of a, a stress. So here is me, you know, showing that it's eight the notion again, and I'm crossing my fingers because I am desperately hoping that I'm going to add this to the soap and it's, it's going to be okay. And it is, it's fine. And spoiler alert, it's totally fine. The ending's beautiful. If you saw the beginning of this video, you already know that, but, um, I was anxious. I was really anxious. Like you can see me prepping to sling this stuff in the mold because it did such naughty things to me before. Um, so I just fixed it so the you know, ratio is a little better so you can see better. So when you do a one pot wonder, remember you have to do the opposite of what you are putting into the mold in the pot. So when I'm doing this, if I want that dark blue water to be on top, that is what has to go into the pot first because it's what's gonna come out of the pot last. And what's out last is what's going to be on top of the mold. Um, and I talk about that because I know when we did this challenge, I struggled with that. And I had quite a few times where I meant the colors to go in a different way. But because I've got uh, a touch of the dyslexia and um, don't always think about what I'm doing because I just want to get the soap in the mold, um, I did it backwards a few times. And that was really frustrating. So remember, whatever goes in last is what's going to be on the bottom of your mold. So I'm just finishing up adding my fragrance to all my little containers and like desperately mixing it in. Another tip that I talk about quite a bit is make sure that you add your fragrance and mix, 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 mix in. Um, this fragrance also kind of riced on me in another soap challenge um, soap I just did, the Kiss Pour. 
So I really, I wanted to add it in, but I wanted to make sure it was behaving. Now, when I add each of these colors in, and I'm doing a good one pot wonder, I keep a little bit back from each of these pores, but especially of the very last pore that I go in, which will be this kind of pretty sand, um, because that is what's gonna go in the pot first. So I'm, I have nothing to work with. Um, I didn't keep as much of that really dark blue because I'm gonna have a lot of that dark blue left at the top of the soap and inside the container when I'm pouring it out. Um, the other thing with the one pot wonder to make sure you do a good job of, which is what I was trying to show here, is pour down the front of the, of the pitcher that you're using and be careful with it. You know, make sure it's not sliding in and poking through the layer below it. So I wanted this to look really frothy and, you know, kind of turbulent. And one of the best ways to show that in an ocean scene, you know, when the ocean gets turbulent, it makes waves, waves have foam. We see that with, as white, right? That's the, that's the foam that we see. So to make a more realistic beach soap, I'm adding just a little bit, I'm trying to show you guys this while I'm doing it, a little bit of the white in there and a little bit to the back as well. And that way, when I pour it in here, that white will kind of intersperse and it'll actually look a bit more wave-like to me. So you'll see what I'm talking about in the final soap. Um, I don't add a whole bunch, I just add a little bit just to kind of help differentiate in the color. And again, I'm pouring down the side of the pouring pitcher carefully so it's not punching through those layers and going through. And you can already see this soap is starting to set up on me, this fragrance. While it definitely was not as naughty as it was in the first one, it's definitely <laughs> speeding up on me a little bit and I'm panicked now. You can see I'm getting a little more frantic making sure the next layer is, is well mixed. So again, I'm doing the same thing. I want that frothiness, so I'm adding the white down to the bottom and, um, and I'm hurrying now because now I can see that I'm, I'm in trouble. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this again to the very front of the soap. And again, I'm gonna keep a decent amount back from each of these pitchers. So when I later go to do the top of the soap, um, I've got something to make it pretty with, which is important because as you'll see at the end of this, um, I make a really pretty top. Well, I think it's a pretty top. You guys might not think it's a pretty top. All right, so now here's my white going in as like the main thing next to the beach and the breakwater. Um, and then the last is gonna be um, my sand. So, and oddly enough, even though I poured that like almost last, I, it actually was one of the more well-behaved ones. And I don't know if that's because it was extra, um, you know, mica in there. I'm not really sure why this one was well-behaved. I really thought this was gonna be like a solid pitcher of of soap that I was pouring in, but it was fine. And remember, whatever you pour in last is what's gonna go in first. So keep, see how much I keep back? It's because I know I'm not gonna have any of that sand color left. So now everything's ready, it's in the pot. Now I'm gonna get myself situated. I'm gonna move um, this over and then I'm gonna move the pitchers on the left-hand side out of my way. I realize that I'm gonna hit them. Yep, don't like that. So I'm gonna move those out of the way. You can see my little freckled shoulder there for a second. Okay, move everybody up, all right. Now, the trick is again, with a one pot wonder, you pour down the side of the mold. And I keep on saying that because I keep on seeing people that are like, oh, you're really good at one pot wonders. I did one and it didn't come out the same. Why? The reason is probably because you didn't pour down the side of the mold. You probably, you know, your hand got tired or you weren't using a good, you know, uh, contraption to kind of keep it where it should be. And you need the side of the mold to help give you those lines because even though you can't see it, like if you look at the soap, when I cut it, compared to what it looks like right now, you would never in a million years realize how much that teal, that dark teal color comes out because it's sliding down the back of the mold and it's you know incorporating with other parts of it. So, and as I'm straightening it out, I slowly straighten it out. Like you see, I've got it resting on that paper towel because now I'm at the end and it is getting solid, but I'm gonna keep just a little bit here so I can still move it down. Yeah, you see me struggling, <laughs> it's heavy. This is five pounds of soap batter, it's not light. Um, and what you want to do is make sure when you do start setting it down that you do so gradually so you don't lose that nice wave. And, I, and I'm mostly successful at it in this one. I will say I kind of set this down a little too quick and you can see in my cut bars, there's a couple spaces where you can obviously tell where I gave up and let it go flat and it's a little flat on one side. Anyway, I continue to pour all the soap on the one side. Again, if you start on the left side, keep pouring from the left side. Keep adding the batter from the left side. Don't change your game up and just jump to the right side. Continue letting it push over. Um, 
especially if it's still decently fluid. Um, I give up on that particular advice about halfway through here because I realize it's just not gonna move over. The other thing I will give um, as my advice with doing a lot of these is don't tap your molds down too much um, because you, again, you'll lose some of that really fine, pretty wispiness and you wanna keep that. That's the whole point of this pour. So now I'm just gonna clean up my edges, kind of tuck all the soap back where it belongs and I'm going to give it a little shimmy a little shake just to kind of even it out. You can see I'm shaking it more than slamming it around because I'm trying to get that to kind of settle down a little bit so I can do the top. So now that that's done, I'm gonna you know kind of pick up my area just a little bit and then go right into doing the top. Um, I always wipe down my edges. Uh, that's a personal thing. A lot of it came from actually watching other makers who are extremely tidy, uh, like Tree Marie, like Lisa. Um, and that's, that's just me. You don't have to do that. That's just something I do. So now I kept back some of this blue, even though I knew I was gonna use it last and I have lots of opportunity to you know, you know, make it apparent, I'm still gonna have that little bit of extra that I saved. I'm gonna make thin, thin, thin lines in the same order that I poured them in the pitcher um, for each and every single one of these. And I talked about it a little bit in other videos, but you can't really see my hand here. All I'm doing is I'm kind of scooping everything towards the front of the funnel and then I'm literally using my, uh, my little spatula here to kind of guide and force the soap out. And if you control it like that, you will get much better lines than just depending on gravity to help you out here. So I'm just going back through and trying to scrape out every little last bit of the soap and you know fill in what I don't actually have. And now I'm gonna, you know, now that I made a mess again, I'm gonna clean it up again for a half a second and then go back to the next line. So, this um, this takes a second. All I'm doing is just laying it down. And again, you'll see me, I'm scraping it all up. I'm wiggling the soap. Uh, soap doesn't like to be disturbed. It likes to be, you know, it, it's lazy, right? It's found a form, it's gonna stay in that form, and it's gonna harden. So if you're gonna ask the soap to do something um, like move with gravity, if you stir it up really good ahead of time, you are breaking all those little bonds that it's trying to make and it's trying to stay still. It's very lazy, it wants to hold still and it will make your life a lot easier and you will still be able to pour it out um, as long as you, again, see what I'm doing here? I'm scraping, 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 and then I'm pushing it down. You can see it here a little bit better. I'm literally using my spatula to guide how fast this is coming out. Um, and there's quite a bit more of this teal color, so I don't have to work quite as hard to get it out because I did a good job saving um, for future me to use. And I'm using a little bit of extra, there's kind of a hole right in the middle. So since I had more of it, I'm just using that to kind of fill in that little spot. Um, so now if you look at that, that light blue, like it is barely moving, it is extremely solid. So I'm just taking a second off screen, I'm being really mean to it. And now look, now it's willing to flow for me, very nicely behaved. So I'm again, I'm taking that, I'm moving very, very close to the edge. I end up kind of covering a lot of this teal, um, but you can see it in the final bar, so I'm okay with that and I'm leaving room for my sand because the white I'm only gonna use as an accent. So if you're wondering, well, where's the white? You'll see, hold on a second, we'll get there. So I'm mixing the sand off screen and now I'm gonna put the sand all the way in the corner and kind of stuff it in. I don't care if it goes over the side of it, which I don't care about anyway, but I actually don't care right now because my biggest goal is to make sure it's filling that space and I'm still leaving some of that blue so you can see the colors decently. So now I've got that in and I can kind of clean up my edges again, give it a little shimmy shimmy, kind of get all the air bubbles out as best I can. But again, I don't want to tap it too much because I don't want to lose my fine lines. And once I clean it up, then we're going to get our white um, to add on here. And I'm <laughs> this, this poor little paper towel, I try not to use paper towels. I try to use rags because I feel bad using paper towels because it's bad for the environment. Um, so it, <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing myself here. So I, I wanna add the white on here. And one of the things that we did in the Soap Challenge Club is we did a technique called brush embroidery. I'll throw a picture up in the corner of my entry because it was actually the first entry that I ever won anything for in the Soap Challenge Club. And we learned to pipe batter onto solid soap and then use a brush to brush it onto the soap. Um, so I didn't want a pipe. I didn't want to go get a piping bag. Um, I'm lazy. This is not news. And so instead I took a pipette and I very carefully squeezed it along the edge of the kind of naturally falling um, lines of soap here. And what ends up happening is, and you'll see in a second here, this pipette takes a second to fill. 
So I, I, I stir it really good off screen. You can kind of see me in the corner here, the shadow doing it. And then I squeeze the pipette and I'm letting it do its thing um, and start to fill while I go get a brush and start brushing. And that is just solely a, uh, a marriage of, of convenience. I wanted to get the soap done. Um, this was, you know, getting on to dusk. It wasn't quite full nighttime yet, but you know, uh, Mr. Cheeky gets very bored of me making soap instead of eating dinner. Um, so I was trying to get this done in a hurry, uh, while still making it look cool. And I've never tried this before. This was completely an experimentation. Um, I've never tried to do a brushed embroidery on still very wet soap. Um, but I think it worked really, really well. I think the, um, the, the feeling of the brushed soap is really nice for a foam, for a beachy foam, uh, which is what I was going for. And I think it's very successful. So this will not be the last time I do this, um, especially not for these beach soaps because they're my favorite. So I'm waiting for this pipette to refill again. While that's refilling, I went and got my brush. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start slowly brushing it down. Now notice the picture is still in my hand um, because while I'm brushing this down, I'm taking my eyeball and just kind of seeing if it's you know ready to go yet. Um, and this is a great example of I'm multitasking and I probably don't need to be multitasking this, but Again, I was I'm I was in a hurry. I was trying to you know do all the things, and that included you know being a good wife and you know eating dinner with my family, uh, which I'm not always great about. So this brush isn't wet. Um, it's just you know obviously wet from the soap, um, but I'm not wetting it. I'm not doing anything special to it. So again, the pipette's full. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing again. And I'm, all I'm doing, again, is just tracing along the delineation that the soap naturally made when I poured it into there. So I'm not artificially making that color or that wave. I'm just following what it already did. So now I squished it. I'm letting it fill back up with soap. And I'm going right back to brush embroidering again. Um, the other reason I did it like this and kind of hurried along is I was worried that um, the soap was going to set up even more on me. And this technique... Um, kind of requires the soap to be soft enough that you can move the brush, but not so soft that it doesn't hold its form. And it's a really tricky trace to get. And I was right at the perfect moment. It just happened to work out. I got very lucky. Again, I did not plan this. I was just hoping it would work. Um, so I am hurrying because I don't want to lose that magic moment of the soap is behaving itself and is holding the form I'm asking it to hold while at the same time, you know, not... Um, not being so hard that I'm having to really push because, you know, paintbrushes aren't terribly, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? They're not very sturdy, right? Like you're not going to grab a paintbrush to go trying to, you know, hang a painting with a nail in. Um, so I needed it to be at that perfect medium trace, medium to thick trace, and it was there. As you can see, I'm, I'm actually fighting with this pipette to get all the soap out, um, and that worked. It worked really well, but I didn't know it would work until I was doing it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and stop talking now and just go ahead and let you guys enjoy me brush embroidering the rest of this.